Hello, my name is John England. I'm a lead civil engineer at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center. My primary areas of expertise are flood hydrology and hydraulics. Let's get started with this presentation for best practices. Today we'll be discussing the first chapter under hazards and loading, chapter B1, hydrologic hazards. We'll focus on two objectives, hydrologic hazard methods and how they're used. The figure shows a hydrologic hazard curve, in this case, a reservoir stage frequency curve for Altus Dam in, Oklahoma, in Western Oklahoma. Here we show reservoir water surface, maximum reservoir water surface on the y-axis and annual exceedance probability on the x-axis. You'll see a lot of these pictures over the next um, several slides and um, we'll use these to describe um, how hydrologic hazards are used to estimate risks. Here are the key concepts up front. We'll discuss these along the way. Hydrologic hazards depict important variables, usually reservoir or river stage, peak discharge, flow volumes, or duration. The hazard curve provides a complete distribution for static and hydrologic potential ferry modes. The shape matters. They also can be used for seismic hazards. You need to target the hazard estimate to address particular failure modes and consequences. Deterministic or design floods are not used in estimating hazard curves. Uncertainty needs to be quantified. Here are the ideas we'll cover in this talk. What are hydrologic hazard curves and why are they important? Some potential failure modes. What is a hydrologic hazard curve? Guidance, principles, and use. You should note um, chapter B2 provides a ton of references, electronic links to publications and software, and lots of details. Please be aware of it. This presentation really is just an overview. The chapter has important details for those estimating hydrologic hazards. Along the way in this talk, we'll show you some uh, hyperlinks that can be directly uh, connected to data sets, software, and publications um, for reference for you to use um, in your studies. So a large fraction of dams, particularly embankments, have failed due to overtopping. Flood hazards are the key to estimating overtopping risks. Some dams that have failed from overtopping are listed in this table. Many of you may be familiar with the Johnstown flood. This is South Fork Dam in Pennsylvania in the 1889, where over 2,000 fatalities uh, occurred. And several other um, famous cases, uh, Buffalo Creek coal mine uh, dam failure in West Virginia, um, a big flood in uh, Montana in 1964 in June, Swift uh, Dam, Laurel Run in Pennsylvania. We'll show you some pictures on that one. Um, Kelly Barnes Dam in Georgia. Many of these are all triggered by extreme rainfalls and have caused loss of life. Here are three examples illustrating why flood hazards are important. From left to right, we have levee overtopping and failures during the April 2019 floods. Here, this is in Davenport, Iowa, along the Mississippi River. Notice the stadium in the foreground here. Uh, the reservoir, uh, excuse me, the river wasn't as high as it was in um, June 1993, but they still have challenges with protecting uh, downtown Davenport with levees during large floods. Uh, the middle picture, uh, Bird Point, New Madrid levee on the Mississippi River, uh, Ohio River as well um, in operation. And then the third picture is uh, uh, Del High Dam in eastern Iowa um, in a dam failure that was caused by overtopping. Lots of detail in our case histories uh, that the Bureau of Reclamation and the Army Corps of Engineers um, have on file, as well as FERC. So why are flood hazards important? This talk will focus on the probability of the load. Notice the load probability, we term it PI here, or PL, uh, in these two equations. Clearly is an equally important contribution for annual failure probability and risk. We'll focus on the hazard curves for the rest of this presentation, but realize the response probabilities and consequences are covered in other best practices lectures. 
Hydrologic hazard curves provide magnitude and probability estimates to assess risk for nearly all failure modes. Here are some key examples. Overtopping, internal erosion, spillway erosion leading to failure, spillway chute wall overtopping, high reservoir levels that can compromise or cause gate issues and others. Again, best practices presentation cover many of these uh, potential failure modes. So what is a hydrologic hazard curve? It is typically a graph of reservoir elevation stage, as shown here, versus annual exceedance probability for dams. For levees, they usually depict river stage. Hydrologic hazard curves also can show peak flows, flood volumes, or stage durations versus annual exceedance probability. Notice the significant extrapolation beyond the observed reservoir stages shown here in these blue dots to the very, very small AEPs needed for, for dam safety. Levy safety, not so much uh, extrapolation, but still we want to be in the one in a thousand to one in 10,000 uh, annual probability. Extreme storm rainfall, historical flood data, and paleo flood data with hydrologic models and statistics are used to estimate these curves. We'll cover these items in due course. Here's an example of a hydrologic hazard curve showing peak flow versus the annual exceedance probability for Folsom Dam on the American River near Sacramento, California. Some details are in the National Flood Frequency Guidelines report, Bolton 17C. Here's a hyperlink to that appendix with the example and uh, the document itself. This data set includes a long gauge record, a large historical flood, and paleo floods shown here as flow ranges and gray boxes. These data are critical to extend the record in time, here about 2,000 years, and reduce the bias and uncertainty in the extrapolations. So notice we have for bias the curve that is shown in red here, as opposed to being down here too flat or up here too high, and uncertainty is essentially the width with these confidence intervals. Here's an example of a hydrologic hazard curve showing maximum reservoir stages for Lake Okeechobee in Florida. This hazard curve is based on a stochastic rainfall runoff model that uses all available data in the watershed. It also includes uh, some wave runoff um, as well in this very, very large lake in South Florida. Flows are routed through the lake accounting for reservoir storage and outflow characteristics, which gives the curve this, this shape. This is the important uh, features that you want to include in hazard curves, especially for dams, uh, to know how downstream controls and uh, storage and gate operations affect um, and can be portrayed in the hazard curve. Monte Carlo simulation is used to combine inputs. For example, reservoir stages, hydrographs, storages, the distributions such as flood volume and estimate hazard curves with uncertainty. A flow-based Monte Carlo sampling scheme is illustrated in the flowchart here on the right. These are the main ingredients in the RMC RFA software reservoir frequency analysis used to estimate reservoir stage frequency hazard curves. Again, a link is shown here directly to the software with a user's manual and some examples. Hydrologic hazard methods and applications for dam safety started at the Bureau of Reclamation principally in the late 1990s although risk has been used for many, many years um, since essentially the inception of uh, American Society of Civil Engineers in the, 18, in the 1870s. Over the past 20 years in particular, the four major federal agencies in dam safety, the Bureau of Reclamation, Army Corps of Engineers, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and Tennessee Valley Authority, as well as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, have performed research and developed similar methods on hydrologic hazards, also known as probabilistic flood hazards. These reports contain key technical details. You can get the references for these in your chapter. You can also find lots of good references on the, on the web um, as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has been um, hosting probabilistic flood hazard workshops since 2013 on this very topic. This 1999 report from the Bureau of Reclamation and Utah State University presents some guiding principles we use today combining flow and rainfall runoff hazard curves, adding lots of data, 
quantify uncertainty, expand data and time with, say, historical and paleophytic information. Do spatial information include that, such as regional precipitation frequency? We need to be deliberate to include each concept and include more information on hydrological processes and hydrological reading, reasoning, which falls under causal information. Are extreme floods and storm data representative of the extreme processes we're trying to predict? Combining data evidence from each piece is the key to do this. You can look at the references in the chapter, such as Merge and Blaschel and a couple of papers in Water Resources Research, as well as the National Research Council publications, which we've uh, used extensively over the years. It takes a team with specific specialties, training and expertise to collect data and estimate hydrologic hazard curves. Meteorology, storm rainfall data, analyses, temporal and spatial patterns of rainfall, hydrometeorology, statistics, extreme precipitation, they're all key things under meteorology. There's some overlap with hydrology, but hydrology, hydraulic engineering, uh, knowing rainfall runoff processes and snow melt and how the rainfall transforms to runoff and the timing of that in your watershed is, is critically important. Statistics, we do lots of statistics with flood frequency, flood statistics, stochastic models, and precipitation frequency analysis. Paleo floods include geology, fluvial geomorphology, hydraulic engineering to look at past records of very, very large floods, which are also critically important. Here's an example of interdisciplinary expertise in using knowledge of storm types and flood processes. So hurricanes and tropical cyclones are a critical dominant factor along the East Coast, important drivers of floods. With Hurricane um, Floyd shown here, this is a picture of rainfall depths in inches uh, with the storm track going up the East Coast, focusing on North and South Carolina from multi-sensor precipitation reanalysis data. Here on the right is um, flow uh, depths and this river, uh, actually Stony Brook, next to this 1850s farmhouse due to the eight, uh, next to the August 1955 flood in Connecticut. Seven U.S. Army Corps of Engineers dams were built after the 55 floods in Connecticut in the Naugatuck River Basin nearby. Flash floods are an important process in many watersheds here in the western U.S., shown by this boulder bar in Left Hand Creek near Lyons, Colorado, uh, looking upstream here. So it's important to integrate rainfall, flood runoff processes, and what's happening in the stream channel itself with fluid geomorphology to describe these flood processes and hazard curves. What about extrapolation? It is critical to collect multiple data sets and lines of evidence for credible extrapolation of the hazard curve. In general, our instrument records are fairly short on the order of about 100 years. And so we use regional precipitation, regional stream flow, and paleoflow data to do this extrapolation. Extrapolation of a reservoir stage record or a stream flow gauge is simply insufficient at your site of interest. A couple of important links here are to the Bureau's um, Hydrologic Hazard Curve Estimating Procedures Report, and also some details. This figure on the left is from Australian Rainfall Runoff. We've closely collaborated with folks there over the years um, and used and shared some knowledge and information back and forth between the agencies. Data sources. Data, data, data. The key data source is used to estimate hazard curves are shown here. Let's start with rainfall. Most are from the National Climatic Data Center or NCEI now. Um, depth area duration storm catalog from the Army Corps of Engineers, Bureau of Reclamation and the National Weather Service. And critically, fine space and time radar and rainfall merge products from the Weather Service could be multi-sensor precipitation estimates, stage four radar or MRMS. Um, extreme flood data critically important as well from the USGS with historical information and some paleoflood data. Snow data and climate data are um, also critically uh, needed as well. Here's an example of storm rainfall data from the Army Corps of Engineers Extreme Storm Database. There's over 1900, 1190 events, excuse me, in the database. 
Most have been used as the basis for probable maximum precipitation in designed rainfall at USACE dams. So these storms in this database are the critical ones that were used to design uh, nearly all of um, particular core facilities, as well as many others like the Bureau of Reclamation. Access to the database is currently limited to internal um, use. We anticipate public access within the next year. Streamflow data from the USGS is critical for flood hazards. They do a fantastic job at doing streamflow measurements, rating curves, um, and archiving data. Both of these pictures illustrate floods above the rating curve for the gauge. So it's critically important to understand data collection methods, limitations, and quantify uncertainty in, dis in discharge estimates. So here on the right, uh, in, on the Wind River, we see a USGS hydrographer um, in the cable car. Uh, notice the cable across the, the Wind River here, making a current meter measurement uh, with um, the current meter shown here. USGS flood reports are also an invaluable resource, and links are here for your uh, handy reference. Paleo flood data provide direct physical evidence of extreme floods larger than those in the systematic or historical record. Those are most valuable. The data also provide potential limits to flood magnitudes over time. Say over the past two to 3,000 years, we've had a long uh, history of stable terraces and development. Paleoflood data increase the effective record length of floods and improve hydrologic hazard uncertainty estimates. The Corps of Engineers through headquarters recently released um, an engineering technical letter. The reference is down here, so I encourage you to become familiar with that and use the payoff of data for um, flood risk management and uh, dam and levee safety practices in the Corps of Engineers. Reclamation has had a long history of using payoff of data for the past about 25 years. Hydrologic hazard methods are classified based on their major input, stream flow or rainfall. Here is a current list of streamflow based methods. Hyperlinks listed on the left provide you reports, software, and manuals. Bolton 17C is a federal flood frequency guideline and used in HEC SSP. The Bayesian estimation and fitting software, RMC Best Fit, for flood frequency includes historical paleo flood data, precipitation events, and regional skew in combination to estimate a flood distribution. The reservoir frequency analysis software RMC RFA is used to estimate reservoir stage frequency curves. While these are all flow based methods, we then combine them with precipitation or um, rainfall runoff based methods. Here's an example of a peak flow frequency curve with historical and paleo flood data. The 1921 devastating flood resulted in over 200 deaths near Pueblo, Colorado. Pueblo Dam by the Bureau of Reclamation was constructed in 1975 in collaboration with the Corps with a flood control pool to contain this very, very large flood. It was the largest flood at the time in US history, and there were many reports written after it and how to do regionalization on, on flood and flood frequency curves in the mid-1920s, principally uh, led by Alan Hazen. Notice historical and paleo flood data, historical data shown here, dramatically increases the record length back to 1859, then additional about 1,000 years before present with a non-exceedance bound. These uh, data help to provide context and reduce uncertainty uh, in the hazard curve for very, very small probabilities. Here is a current list of rainfall runoff based methods. Details again are in your report uh, chapter with um, all the references therein. Hyperlinks on the left provide you reports, precipitation frequency estimates, software, and manuals. Flood runoff hydrographs, peaks, and volumes are estimated from HEC HMS with precipitation frequency estimates from NOAA Atlas 14 or user-derived estimates. That's the key approach we're using now. Some parallel concepts are in the Australian rainfall and runoff uh, guide. Monte Carlo simulation uh, we use with rainfall runoff models to estimate flood peaks and volume probabilities. The main input is a rainfall distribution. So the probabilities really come from rainfall with spatial and temporal patterns. Several extreme storms are generated, then floods are estimated for each storm event. The rainfall runoff captures the physics of floods, 
with the transformation of rainfall to runoff and routing of floods through the watershed. A key requirement is to calibrate and validate the rainfall runoff model with the largest floods to ensure that the model actually represents the flood timing, peak, volume, and shape. Here's an example from the 1600 square mile watershed at Fryant Dam in California. Calibration to the, the large 1997 flood shown on the left with flood magnitudes approaching 100,000 CFS. Notice that the hydrograph that's simulated from the model shown in red fairly accurately matches the timing of the observed hydrograph shown in blue uh, and the overall shape. Secondary calibration can be done with a peak flow frequency curve for this case study uh, with historical, uh, particularly paleo flood data shown in these red boxes here. It is crucial to represent uncertainty in hydrologic hazard estimates. Uncertainty in data, flood magnitudes, precipitation in space, runoff model parameters, future climate, and other aspects can be quantified. So here on the left, we have uncertainty in reservoir stage from precipitation. There's various precipitation frequency estimates um, which result in these um, peak water surface elevations for Frank Dam, uh, again in the Central Valley in California. Historical and paleo flood data help place this August 1955 flood here on the Sheepog River uh, in West Central Connecticut in proper time context and reduce help reduce uncertainties uh, that may be applied to uh, nearby Thomason Dam. Here is the recommended workflow for estimating hydrologic hazards. This shows stream flow base estimates on the left and rainfall runoff estimates on the right. Stream flow data, again, includes historical and paleo flood data. Rainfall runoff uh, includes regional precipitation frequency and extreme storm rainfall. These two estimates are then combined with RMC best fit and a hydrologic hazard curve for reservoir stage is estimated with RMC RFA. Risk analysis inputs for specific failure modes can then be obtained from RMC RFA. It is important to realize that hydrologic hazard data, the coll data collection and methods used are scalable for the risk analysis and decision being made. There are three main levels of study as shown. Data and methods depend on the type of study and risk analysis goals. For example, issue evaluations, we spend a bit more time increasing regional data collection, could be rainfall and or paleo floods, and level of detail for quantitative risk assessments. Two main inputs to quantitative risk analysis, reservoir stage frequency curve shown here on the left, and a fragility curve for say an overtopping potential failure mode. The hazard curve on the left provides the depths and the probabilities over the areas of interest. This could be the dam crest, saddle dikes, or parapet wall. On the right, we show an example failure distribution for overtopping. Details on this are covered in subsequent presentations. Here is an example to partition the reservoir stage frequency curve into discrete intervals for an inventory and risk calculations. Details are on this uh, in the best practices chapter A5 on inventory analysis. But notice for discretization that uh, peak water surface elevation is shown here on this blue line, so you can easily plug these into event trees. Thank you for your attention for, on this presentation um, of hydrologic hazards. We now have some time for questions and discussion.